So I'm about to cook myself some lunch and I thought I would just take a minute before I do to show you the cook kit I'm going to use today. So this is my Austrian military surplus cook kit. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, now just before you click this video off because you're about to say that aluminum is dangerous to cook in, it may even cause Alzheimer's, I invite you to stay around for a little while to hear what the truth is based on research. Now, the next thing I want to say, of course, is that Verustalika did send this out to me and I want to thank them for doing so and I wanted to share it with you. And the third thing is, is the reason I chose this kit today because of what I'm going to cook in it. And this will come under a separate video. So the meal I'm about to cook in this is a hybrid between herbs worst and pemmican. Now you're asking what herbs worst is. If you've been following along my videos, I have now two other videos where I have one made the herbs worst at home and two brought it out here to the woods to cook a meal of it. And of course I have other meal or other videos on, based on pemmican. Now herbs worst very quickly is a German military food ration known as the iron rations that would have been issued to the troops in the early 1900s, so First and Second World War, it was made from pea flour and uh, pork bellies, primarily, with a few other ingredients in it. And it made a sausage consistency when it all gelled together. In fact, it was put in sausage casings. In fact, that's what herbs worst means pea sausage. And it is a long keeping ration that can be kept in a backpack without refrigerated. And when somebody is cut off from their supply line and needs to make themselves a meal, they can take the herbs worth so and dilute it in hot water, cook it up for a little bit, and they will have themselves a very nutritious calorie dense pea soup. And that's what I did in my last video on the subject is I actually made the soup from that. Now, in the end of that video, I talked about what would happen if I took the herbs worst and combined it with another long lasting ration, pemmican. Well, that's going to be under a separate video today, but this video is going to be about the cook kit itself. So what I want to do is very quickly, I'm just going to go over a little bit of history of this kit, why it still, even today, makes a great choice for a cook kit. I'll give you the specifications, I think, very briefly. They'll all be in the video description, of course. But if most importantly for most of you is, is it safe to use? All right, as I mentioned, I'm going to be putting all the information I'm about to give you in the video description, as well as the link to where this is still available for purchase on the Vrustalika's website. Since it is surplus, it probably won't last forever. Once they're sold out, they're going to be gone because, of course, they're not made any longer. And the big attraction to this is $22.99 Canadian. I mean, you really can't beat that price on a good well trusted, well, well, you know, piece of cook kit that has a lot of history behind it. Now, let's just go over the brief history of this. And it, the Austrian military chose this design based on the German military cook kit. In fact, they're interchangeable. Parts are interchangeable. Everything else is interchangeable. They're virtually identical, with the exception, of course, of the stamping to identify the kit by number. That's the only thing different about the kits. So quickly, the overall specs for this is this kit weighs in a pretty much exactly one pound or just over 483 grams. If you measure top to bottom, it's 6.25 inches, 155 millimeters. The width across is uh, widest is uh, 6.75 inches, 170 millimeters. And the depth, and that's the pot itself, is 4.25 uh, inches or 105 millimeters. Now I'm just going to take it apart because I want to talk about the next specs and at the same time that I show you what's inside. So you get three components when you get a kit like this or at least if you get a complete kit. First off is the primary pot. That's the main pot. Now this is a 1400 milliliter, 1 1.4 milliliter pot and it does have actually measured graduation. So not so much the numbers but there are marks inside of the pot itself so that you can can judge how much water you have inside of it. So that, and boy is it ever light, eh? Now inside of that is this piece here, and it's just a little kidney-shaped pan. I'll show you what this is used for, but primarily this would have been used when, people, when the soldiers went into their mess t uh, kit, or the mess tent, I should say, picked up their ration from the, from the uh, counter, and they could carry things like bread or other items inside of this, where the main one may have been used for their stoop or sue or what, soup or stew or whatever else it is. And of course, then you would have the lid. Now the lid itself has 
dual use. It is a 500 milliliter cup pot pan, whatever you want to use it for, because you could actually do frying in this. Not a whole lot, maybe one, maybe two sausages, a couple of pieces of bacon, or, uh, you know, pretty small pieces of meat. Uh, that wouldn't be my choice, of course, but it's certainly doable. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's an option if that's what you have. So the um, history behind these is these were made between the 60s and the 80s for the Austrian military. And of course, they've been since been replaced with a newer kit altogether. But uh, yeah, so that's, that's the basic kit in a nutshell. Now, there's not a lot to say about these kits. They are made from aluminum and they do have a olive green anodized, not anodized, painted on finish, baked painted on finish. They will withstand use in a fire. You can see this one has been in a fire a few times, but not a whole lot. It's not something I would choose to put in a fire. It's That would be secondary. Of course, a soldier would carry this on their person. They'd probably think, have things stuffed inside of it just to take up a little bit of space. But if they were lucky enough to be able to get to a field kitchen and get fed there, then they might go down the line with their kit like this, able to have some of their meal put in the main portion of the kit small bits of it put in the uh, small kidney bowl and the other part like this and then of course actually you'd have to put it through the handle first to get it to balance but if you had food in all of these items then you could walk back to wherever it is that you wanted to sit down and eat balancing it balances better trust me i've done it with balances better when there's items inside of them but yeah, so this would be carried back to wherever it is you're sitting down to have your meal and you can have everything segregated instead of everything all in one pot. Now, let me just take the small kidney bowl off. I'll take the So the smaller pot of the two will also sit on top upside down if you want to do, I guess, a little steam baking. This would work for, I think, doing eggs well enough. If you didn't want to put them over an open fire, you could put a little bit of oil, put water in the bottom, bring the water into a boil. It's not quite pouching, but it's pretty close to pouching. I've done that with my uh, Swiss military kit as well, my Swedish kit, sorry, not Swiss, Swedish kit, and it works a little slow, but it does work, and nothing sticks when you do it that way, I'll tell you. But uh, otherwise, you know, you can support this over a fire. You can see that the bale does have a notch in it that can be used for putting it over the fire it has when you lift it it semi locks is the best way to say it so you could actually well I will be doing this to make my coffee with but you can pour from this when it's in that semi locked position like this otherwise you can release it and just put it back to the side so that the bale doesn't actually drop all the way down and right into whatever your heat source is it will go over the other way but that way it sits out to the side like that how simple is this? All right, let's talk about just how safe it is to use this. All right, let's just talk for a minute or two about the safety of using aluminum pots and pans, especially older ones like surplus. Are they, in fact, safe to use? Well, there is this re reoccurring uh, mo notion on the Internet that aluminum causes Alzheimer's. And I can't tell you how many times people have said that to me in the uh, comments on some of my videos where I use aluminum pots and pans even when I'm using anodized aluminum, where the aluminum itself is not exposed at all to the cooking or to the food inside of it. And the truth is, yes, there is an association, and it's an observational association between aluminum and Alzheimer's, but no research to confirm that link. So for most people, they're gonna say, well, that's enough. That's all I need to know is that maybe some of the Alzheimer's patients were tested to have high levels of aluminum or used aluminum pots and pans to do their cooking in. That's enough for me. I'm just gonna stay away from it. Okay. Okay, fair enough. If you want to be super safe, there's nothing wrong with following that theme. I think you're denying yourself access to some really cool, lightweight, and still very useful equipment like this uh, Austrian Army cook kit. But the truth is about aluminum is this, com this information I give you is from the Center Centers for Disease Control in the U.S. and Health Canada, and they have posted research. I'll put the links to that research and those articles on, in the video description if you want to dig a little deeper into the safety of aluminum yourself. In Canada, what's of interest is that on average, uh, each Canadian will consume about 11 milligrams or micrograms, I think it's micrograms of aluminum each day, just in their food. 
and it's just there naturally for the most part. So that's you know what we take on a daily basis on average with, without any harmful effects. Well, what's been found is that in cooking in aluminum pots and pans, on average pr produce about two micrograms of aluminum in the food. And that's only if it's not used in a proper manner, and I'll talk about that in a minute. So suffice it to say that the amount of aluminum that you're likely to get in your food from cooking in pots, aluminum pots and pans is very, very low, especially if you follow a few safety tips, which I'll suggest to you in a minute. Now, the World Health Organization say consumption of up to 50 milligrams a day is safe for humans without any known or proven health problems. Now, I know but you could say, well, Mark, you already said that there is an association with Alzheimer's disease. I'm not arguing that. The point is, is that there is no proof. Nothing that's going to stop me from using aluminum, at least on an occasional basis, especially since I use these tips that I'm going to share with you. Number one, this comes from Health Canada as well. Don't put your aluminum in a dishwasher. The heat and agitation can cause oxidation on aluminum pots and pans. And I'm talking and also just regular aluminum pots and pans that you may have in your home already, not military cook kits even. So don't put them in that dishwasher because if they cause oxidation the next time you go to use it, then you are uh, loosening up, we'll say, or causing some of the aluminum to become available to be mixed in with your food. So that's an easy one. Wash them by hand. That's already, that's what I'm going to be doing today when I'm finished these, is just washing them by hand. The next one is, is don't cook acidic foods on a regular basis. And acidic foods primarily are tomatoes. So uh, no spaghetti sauce. That's another uh, piece of advice. Now, that's not to say that you can't do that ever. It's just not recommended to do on a regular basis because acidic foods can leach out some of the aluminum from the pot or pan and that can get into your food. So if you stay away from acidic foods, then um, that's one less cause of aluminum get into your food. And the final one is super simple. Don't use hard metal uh, implements inside of it. So don't use stainless steel or titanium uh, spoons. I use, in fact, a plastic and I have a wooden spoon in my cook. -head. So I'm using a, a light my fire spork to cook and eat with because I know that cannot possibly scrape any of the aluminum off my food. So that's, that's the safety tips. Beyond that, Health Canada and the CDC say aluminum is an effective material for cooking in in pots and pans so you should not be afraid to use it if everything else about it makes sense like $22.99 Canadian. That's pretty cheap for a cook kit that has been proven time over by many of the European militaries who copied the original German design. Okay, that's all I wanted to share for you today with the Austrian mess kit that I want to thank again Vrustalika for sending out to me. And like I said, they're still available. Some of them are pretty rough looking, like a fortunate, very little paint off of mine. But uh, likely I'm probably going to take high heat paint and coat the outside of it anyway so I can more... Uh, safely we'll say put it in an open fire without it baking off any more of the paint that's already come off of it but you know if unless you're into military reenactments and you really want the most original you can certainly doctor these up with some high heat paint and do a just fine job of that uh, it's cheap and it's just a nice piece of history and like I said they work I'm going to cook my luncheon today in fact I'd invite you to watch for that video where I cook the hybrid pemmican and Herb's Worst Hybrid. I haven't even come up with a name for this yet, so I might even ask people to suggest a name for it. Okay, that's everything. Get out and explore. Take that path less followed, because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.